Hi, welcome to my video on solving equations with decimals. Solving equations with decimals. Let's solve like normal. Move the x's to the left and the numbers to the right. So 0.2x equals 8 subtract 2. 0.2x equals 6. And decimal 2 divided into the 0 to the 6. So we do with a pencil or pen. So that's 6. So the decimal is there. And the 6, the decimal is always on the right when it's not there. Put the decimal in. Move it one place. Move it one place. When I move it one place to the right in both of these, then I move my decimal up. So now I got a 2 and a 60. 2 into 6 goes 3. Multiply back, and I get a 6. Bring down your 0. It's 2 into 0 goes 0, so the answer is 30. So the only difference is, is that you're dividing with decimal instead of dividing with an integer or a whole number. But we can handle that. Like terms, we add them up. We get uh, 1.3, add on 2.2. So that gives us 3.5. Because when you're adding decimals, you line the decimals up, decimals under decimals. And now you divide both sides by 3.5 or 3.5. The decimals cancel out, you get an X. And so what is 3.5 divided into 7? Again, the decimal is there, and the 7 is on the right. When it's don't see it, we move it one place, we move it one place, and we move it up. So now we have a 35, the decimal is gone. 35 and a 70, 35 and a 70 goes two. So the answer is two. C, we have a 1.4x minus 1.5x equals 2.7. Move the decimal 5x over, make a negative, move the negative over, make a positive. Now we have to uh, to subtract that, we get a 0.9x equals 2.7. And 1.4, 0 0.5, and you subtract. You can't subtract, so that becomes a 0, and that's a 14. 14 subtract 5 is 9, and you keep your decimals under the decimals. And go back to here. So 0 0.9 divided into uh, 2.7, that cancels to give you 1. And we have to divide... 0 0.9 into 2.7. The decimals are in both numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Move the decimal one place to the right. Move the decimal one place to the right. So now I have a 9 and a 27. So that's a 3. So we get 3 for that. D, we have x is to the left. Make that a negative. Numbers to the right. Make that a negative, and we add up the x's, 6 and subtract there, we get a 2.1x, make that an x, okay, and there's a negative and a negative, so we add them up, we get a 0 0.84, divide by 2.1, divide by 2.1, cancels out, x equals, so 2 decimal 1 divided into 0 decimal 84. Now we know the answer is going to be negative. Negative divided by positive negative. But we don't have to put the negative in here. So we move the decimals are in one place to the right. One place to the right. Move it up. <coughs> Excuse me. 21 into 8 can't go. 21 divided into 84 is 4. So we get negative 0.4. So, pause your video and, <clears throat> excuse me, pause your video and work these out and see how you're going to do. Here we go. When you get them done, press play and see if you got the right answer. X is on the left, numbers on the right. Okay. So, we add those up. We get a 3.6. So decimal 3 divided 
uh, into both numbers. That gives me an x, one x, and we got decimal three, zero decimal three, be divided into three point six. You can use your calculator too, but I like to use my movie decimal one place in the divisor, one place in the dividend, move it up. Now we got a three into 36. Three into three goes once. Three times one is three. This is zero. Bring down the six. Three into six goes two. Two times six is six. That's a zero. So the answer is 12. Number two. The x's are already on the left side. So we add these up and a negative and add on a positive. So it's a 1.2x negative 0.36 divide by 1.2 on each side and we have 1.2 being divided into negative 36 and we didn't need to put the negative there we could have put said that was a negative right there negative divided by positive negative we could leave the negative out move your decimal from one place to the left in each move it up 12 can't go into 3 nope and 12 into 36 is 3, so I get a 36. So the answer, decimal 2 divided by decimal 2 is 1. And so that's a negative decimal 0, 3. Number 3, let's see. We have to move the x's to the left. So that's a plus 2.6x, 7.65. Subtract 3.6, and when we subtract, uh, it's like subtracting a 41 from a 26, so it's a 1.5. That's sometimes I look at it that way, and it's negative. Like if you say that's a 41 and 26, you get a 15, so it's one, but it's a 1.5x. Or you should calculate it. And we subtract here, we get a, uh, a four decimal zero five. And just to look at that, 7.65 and 3.6. That's a zero. Five subtract zero is five. Six subtract six is zero. Four subtract seven subtract three is four. So it's 4.5. Now we're going to divide by negative 1.5 on each side. That cancels to give me an x. And when I divide here, I get 1.5 divided in, oh, into 4.05 and we know that's a positive divided by negative so it's a negative answer so I don't have to put my negative in here move the decimal in one place and 15 into 40 goes 2 2 times 15 is 30 subtract and I get a 0, 10 bring down your 5 so 15 into 105 goes Try your calculator, 7, or use your head, 5, 7 to 35, 3, perfect. So it's a negative 2.7. And number 4, we have to get removed brackets, so 2 times uh, 1.2 is 2.4x, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. That's a 0.5, the same as a half, so 0.5 times 6 is 3x, 0.5 times positive, so that's one point, uh, half of it, 16. If we treat that as a 32 and treat that as a half, a half of that is 16, so it's a 1.6, or use your calculator. Numbers on the left side, change your sign, sorry, <clears throat> variables on your left side, numbers on your right side. So that plus becomes a minus, that minus becomes a plus, and we subtract here, we get a 0.6x equals, that's a decimal of zero, so that's a 3.6, divide by 0 0.6, and that cancels, we get x equals, so 0 0.6 divided into, and your decimals move one place, one place, 6 into 36 goes 6, so that's a, six that's just working some decimals i didn't want to make them too complicated just wanted to show you that you can solve equations with decimals by moving the x's to the left numbers to the right 
and dividing with your pencil or dividing with your calculator and everything works out. Let's continue. Well, let's, I'm going to work these decimals another way now, but I'm going to take it through a review first. State the number of decimal places in each. And that's a one decimal place. That's a two decimals, because two decimals after the... That's a three decimal place, one, two, three. So the number of decimal places is decided by the number of places to the right of the decimal. And right here is a two decimal place, because it's two decimal places to the right of the decimal. One decimal place. And this is the three decimal place. Okay, change each of the above to... To, to change each of the above to whole numbers, let's check. If we got a one decimal place, we multiply by 10. If we got a two decimal place, we multiply by 100. If we got three decimal places, we multiply by 1,000. That's because what we're going to do, we're going to change our decimals when we solve equations to whole numbers, and then it's easier to work with. So if you think about it, uh, look at 1.3 up above, it's multiplied by one decimal place, we multiply by 10. And 10 times 2.3, the decimal is 23, because multiplying by 10 moves in one place. This is two decimal places, so we're going to multiply it by 100. The number of decimal places is the number of zeros. Moving to two places, you get multiplying by 100 is two places to the right. That's a three decimal places because we said it was three, and we multiply by a thousand. When you multiply a decimal by a thousand, the decimal moves three places to the right. So one, two, three, two places, one, two, one place is one. This is two decimal places, so we multiply by a hundred, and a hundred times that gives me twenty-nine. Two decimals, one places. One decimal place is just multiplied by ten. 10 times 0.5 is 5. Move one place to the right. Three decimal places, we multiply by 1,000. So the decimal moves three places to the right. One, three, four. We practiced that when we did the, the uh, unit on adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, decimals, decimal places, everything. But we're, you keep reviewing all your skills. And the more you review them, the more you bring them up, then the easier it is to retain them when you need them. Okay, let's continue. To eliminate decimals in an equation, multiply both sides by 10, 100, or 1,000 so that all decimals become whole numbers. Remember when we did solving with fractions? We multiplied both sides by the LCD. So we're going to do the same thing when we get decimals. We're going to multiply by, right here, we're going to multiply both sides. We got one decimal place, and so we got one, we're going to multiply by 10. We're going to multiply each side by 10. So that's 10 times 0.2x and 10 times 2. So notice we multiply both sides by 10. But remember, in fractions, if we didn't want to do both sides by 10 like that, we could just go 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. And what will happen, we would get, if you multiply 10 by that, you get a 2x. 10 times 2 is 20, and 10 times 8 is 80. So when you multiply by 10, each part of the equation by 10, you have no decimals. We're going to multiply this one also by 10. So we're going, I'm going to take a shortcut. 10 times each one. 10 times that, 10 times 2.2x, and 10 times 7. So you multiply by 10, the decimal moves one place to the right. Multiply by 10, move one place to 22x. Oops, put an equal there then. And 10 times 7 is 70. So multiplying it by 10, we have no decimals. And now it's easier to solve. And this one is multiplied by 10 also because you got one decimal place and one decimal. Notice you got one decimal place in each, so we're going to multiply by 10. 10 times each. So here we go. We're multiplying 10 by each part of the equation. So multiplying by 10, one place to the right. Multiplying by 10, you get one place to the right. Multiplying by 10, 
one place to the right. So 0.5 becomes 5, 2.7 becomes 27, 1.4 becomes 14. Remember, we're not solving them, we're just moving them. And D, we got a one place, two places, one place, two places. So if I multiply by 10, I'll get 36 here. But when I multiply this one by 10, I'll only get 4.2. So that means I have to multiply it by the most decimal places. So I have to multiply this one by 100 because it takes 100 times 0.42 to make it a whole number. So you have to multiply it by the most decimal places. The largest number it takes. So that's 100. And let's see what happens. It takes 100. Just takes a second to write it down. And it's minus 100 times 0 0.42. So 100 moves the decimal two places. So notice, two places. So it's decimal six, so six, and then another zero. Multiply by 100 is two places, so it's 42. Multiply by 100 is two places, so it's 150. Because that's 1.5, two places is a, to the right, x. And 100 times that is uh, 42. So if there's two decimal places, you multiply every number by two. If there's three decimal places in, in the equation, you multiply by a thousand. So it's the largest number of decimal places, the largest number it takes to move the decimal. Let's continue. So without solving, let's you pause the video and see if you can multiply these by the correct number. But don't don't have to solve them. Right here, I got a one decimal place, one decimal place, one decimal place. So I'm multiplying every part of the equation by 10. So we're multiplying by 10. 10 times 0.3 is 3x. 10 times 2.4 is 24. Well, one place. And 10 times 0.2, 1.2 is 12. So one place is three, one place. And we don't have to solve them. We just want to have a whole, uh, change each number to a whole number. Let's put number in here so we make sure I got it. That's a one place, that's a one place, and that's a two place. So to do this one, I have to multiply it by 100. Multiply each part of my equation by 100. Notice we need to multiply both sides, so we multiply every part of the equation times 100, times 100, times 100. And we need two places, because if we don't have 100, two places, then we won't have this one changed. 10 is no good, because if you multiply point, if you multiply 10 times point like that, you'll only get 3.6, so that's not enough, so you need 100 to multiply through everything. And 100 times is a negative 250 x. 100 times is a positive 130 because the decimal moves two places, one, two. And 100 times this is a negative 36. Two places is, as you can see, one, two. So now everything is whole numbers, everything perfect. And this one, we got a one place, one place, one place, two place. Oh, again, we got to multiply by 100. So it just takes longer to write it down. So you multiply 100 by every part of the equation. So I'm putting 100 down. Now, I'm writing it down so you can see what's happening. And as you can see, it takes a bit of time, but it works. 100 times... Uh, 4.1 is a negative 410. Moves two places. 100 times 0.35 or 3.5 is 350. 100 is negative 260. Moves two places. Multiply by 100 and you get a 765. Because that's a 7 there. And in number 4, we have to multiply by 2 first. So 2 times is 2.4x, 2 times is 2 times 1 is 2, 
0.5 is a half, a half of 6 is 3. And 0.5 times 32 is uh, positive 1.6. You take your calculator and go multiply by 0.5. Two fives are ten. Zero, you got to carry your one as one hundred and fifteen sixteen. That's a one decimal place. That's a one decimal place. Two decimal places. So you move it one, two, so you get one point six, not sixteen. But you got two. Decimal. So you use a calculator to go three point two times point five. You get one point six. And we have them now. Let's see. Notice I got rid of the numbers in front. Now how many decimal places? One. One, one decimal place, so I multiply them all by 10. Multiply every part by 10. 10 times 3x and 10 times 1.6. 10 moves the decimal one place to the right. 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 3 is 30. And 10 times moves one place to the right, 16. So I have no decimals. Again, you, if you eliminate the 2, multiply by 2 and the point 0.5 first, then multiply by 10, 100, or 1,000. Makes more sense. Here we go. Let's now, we did all that work just to get here. We're going to solve this. We did the normal way, where we add them all up and add it to the left side. We still do the same thing, but we're going to eliminate the decimals first. So let's multiply all of these by 10 because there's one decimal place. One, one, one. We're going to multiply each one of these by 10. Just be careful writing it down. So we multiplied them all by 10. I actually I put the 10 out in front. So there's 10 multiplied by each term. Now you can see 10 times that is 11. 10 times 3.6 is a negative 36. And 10 times 4.1 is 41. Now you can continue. So now we're, we're solving it right on through and the numbers go to the right. Variables go to the left. So 11x equals that's a 77 divided by 11 we get x is a 7. So eliminating the decimal might you know, cause you to be more correct in one sense, but if the eliminating the decimal in the equation will be done again in some word problems you do in grade 10, 11, and 12. So, good idea. And we have to move the x's. Let's see, do we want, we got a 2, a 2, and a 2. So we're going to multiply by 100. So let's multiply by 100 first. Eliminate the decimal first and then move your x's and numbers after. Multiply it by a hundred. A hundred times decimal sixty is sixty-one. Decimal decimal sixty-one. Hundred times eighteen point eighteen is a negative eighteen. And a hundred times gives you one x or just x. Hundred multiplied by hundred moves to two places. One, two. So it's one. And 61x minus x equals 18. X's go to the left, numbers to the right. So now you can see there's no decimals there. So it's less confusion. So 61 subtract 1 is 60. Divide by 60. And we have 18 divided by 60. So 6 into that goes 3. 6 into that goes 10. So you could have, if you want, Three tenths as your answer, or if you want, you could say that's three tenths is decimal three, because three over ten, ten is in the, the three has to go into tenth place. And we got one decimal place, one decimal place, and two decimal places, so we have to multiply each part of the equation by a hundred. Takes a hundred to move all the numbers decimals to whole numbers. And 100 times 1.2 is 120. X. 100 times 0.8 is 80. X. 
and 100 times 0 0.04 is a 4. Two places to the right when you multiply by 100. Now you're going to add these to get 40, and that's a 4. Divide by 40, so I get x is equal to uh, 4 over 40 is 1 over 10, and 1 over 10 is decimal 1, 1 tenth, 0.1. Number four, the numbers, oh, I got to multiply by, that's a hundred, that's a two places, one place, two place, one place, so I have to multiply by a hundred. I'm multiplying each part by a hundred. And a hundred times negative 2.24x, and a hundred times Oh, a negative, make that, that's a negative, be careful, I have to, I have to be careful, because I do make mistakes. So I multiplied them all by 100, because I have two decimal places, that's the most decimal places. So 100 times 0.12 is 12x, 100 times uh, 8.1 is 810, 100 times the negative uh, 24, because it moves two places. And 10 times point, oh, that's a, oh, see, that's 100. 100 times that is a negative 90. So 100, 100, 100, yep, I had a 10 there, so I made sure I put a 100. Then my variables go to the left, change the signs, and my numbers go to the right, and I change the signs. So negative becomes a positive, that negative becomes a positive, that's 108, I had an 81, just got to be careful. So add, you get 36x, and add here you get uh, 8, 10, and 90, I got to subtract 0, that's a 7, and that's 11, so it's 720. Positive, and I divide by 36, cancels to give me 1x. 36 into 72 goes 2, and I get a 0, so that's a 20. 20 is the answer. Number 5, I have an equation with decimals, so I multiply through by the most decimal places, which is 10, 100, 1,000. 2, 1 decimal place, 1 decimal place, 1, so I'm multiplying it by 100 again. So here I go, multiply every part by 100. Now, some people, I'm writing it down. I'm multiplying every part by 100, so don't make a mistake. But what some people do, they know they're going to multiply this by 100 because of the two decimal places to eliminate the decimal. So in their head, they'll go 100 times this one, and they'll write 15x. 100 times 3.5, they'll write 350. It's the same as what I'm doing here, only they don't write this step. 100 times 2.5 is right there, so it's 250x. And 100 times 1.2 is a negative 120. So some people, when they get used to it, only when you get used to it, will not put 100 times each. They'll just go in their head, multiply everything by 100. So multiply by 100, move your decimal two places to the right. Then you continue to solve. X is on the left, numbers on the right. That becomes a negative, and that becomes a negative when you move them across. So that's a negative 235x equals negative uh, 470. Divide by negative 235 on both sides. That cancels, and I get x, and negative divided by negative is a positive, and 235 divided into 470 looks like a 2. 2 times 5 is 0, and 6 plus 1 is 7, and 2 times 4, yep, so that's a positive 2. And there's one here. It says solve and check. Mm, I'm going to solve it, and then I'm going to check it. So one decimal place, one decimal place, one decimal place, one de so I'm multiplying by 10. Now, if you want to make a shortcut, I'm multiplying by 10, so let's shorten it up. But that's only if you wish. If you want to write 10 times each one, go ahead. 
that's what you did. But I'm multiplying by 10, so that's a 3. Multiply by 10 is an 18. Multiply by 10 is a negative 7x. Multiply, oh, this is 7, make sure. Multiplying by 10, I get 82. So when you multiply by 10, the decimal moves 1 place 3, 1 place 18, 1 place 7, 1 place 82. And then you get a 3x plus 7x equals 82 plus 18. So the negative 7x becomes a plus. Negative 18 becomes a plus 18. That's a 10x equals 82 and 18 is 100. And you divide by 10. X is the tens cancel. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So the answer is 10. So now I have to write down the original equation. So I'm going to check it. And again, I didn't make the answer difficult, didn't make the equation difficult, because remember, you need to do a process. Practicing, practicing, practicing makes way better. So I'm going to put 10 in the place of X, because I'm checking. So X is 10, so I sub 10 back in where I see an X. 0. 0.3 times 10 is 3. 0. 0.7 times 10 is 7. And something is, let's see, mm -hmm. I have a 10. Do I have a negative? Is it negative? No. Nope. That's a plus. Okay. Something has gone uh, 8.2. Oh, there's a positive. So one of those where I have an error made here now. And multiplied by 10, right? 10. Multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10. 82 and 18 is 100, that's a 10. And 10 times 0.3 is 3. And I didn't multiply by 10, so that's a negative uh, 1.2. And let's see, I have an error, but it's like I don't want the video to go too long. So that's 0 0.3, that's a positive 1.2, and that's a 10. Oh, here it is. I knew there was, see that negative? You gotta be careful, there's the negative there, and I didn't put the negative in. That's a negative, that makes it a negative seven. And the answer, negative seven and 8.2 is 1.2. Again, gotta be careful writing down the original equation, because like I did, I left out, and I did that when I was doing one before that, and I had to correct it. I left out, recopying it, I left out the negative. Okay, let's continue. Well, what I want to do now is compare the two methods. So, let's work this out per normal without multiplying by, to eliminate the decimal. So, let's work this out. And I just, that's a negative becomes a positive, and that's a negative becomes a positive. When you add these, you get a 1.6x, 0.2 plus 1.4, and I divide by 1.6, that's x, and 1.6 divided into 0.32, the decimal is in both is there. Move it one place in your divisor, one place in your dividend. Move it up. After you move it one place, move it one place, you move it directly up. 16 into 3 can't go. 16 into 32 is 2. So that gives me a 32. So the answer is 0 0.2. But if you do it the other way, you got a one decimal place and a two decimal place and a one decimal you got to multiply it by 100. I'll write this down. I know you can see it. I just want to make sure that everything is going to be okay. So I'm going to multiply each part by 100. I'm showing you. So 100 times 0.2 is 
20. 100 times 0.32 is a negative. That's a negative, so it's a negative 32. And 100 times is a negative 140x. So I multiply it by 100. But if you didn't want to put that in, you could go 100, two places. Multiply by 100, two places. Multiply by 100, 140. And x's go to the left. Numbers to the right. So that's a negative, I made a positive. That's a negative, I made a positive. That gives me 160x equals 32. Divide by 160. That cancels. Now, uh, 160 divided by 32, I can reduce it down, or I can take a calculator and work it out. Or I can divide, I'll do it several ways. There's 160 into 32, the decimal's there, and there, so it's already on the right, so I just move it up. 160 into 32 can't go, but it's zero. 160 into 320 is two. So you get 320, so it's a point 0.2. Another way is use your calculator and go 160. In a calculator, you put your 32 in first. Pressure division sign, go 160, and you get point 0.2. Or another way, break it down. So 32 divided by 2. 16 divided by 2. 8 and 40. And notice 8 into 40, 1 and 5. So 1 fifth is 0.2. 1 fifth is 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. So 1 fifth is 0.2. 1 fifth is 2 tenths and 2 tenths is 0.2. So different ways to convert this to a decimal. So I showed you the two methods. It's your choice. But most times, multiplying by the number of decimal places to eliminate all the decimals in the equation is faster most times. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video on uh, solving equation with decimals. Good review. Practice your skills. And if you like what I'm doing, click the like button. If you're not a subscriber, click, click the subscribe button. And the notification bell because there's many more videos coming to explain all the math going from 9 to grade 10 to grade 11 to grade 12. And it just takes my time to write them up. And write a comment if you wish. And visit my math website, mathfullyexplained.com. There you have three sections. The me section is on me. That's my degrees and teaching experience. The video section is tells you about the strategies you're going to use to help you learn your math. And the section on content gives you the topics and the number of videos on each topic. And the black font is what's online right now. The red font is what we will develop in the near future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.